MRI studies show that many people have herniated discs, but not every herniated disc causes pain. So if you have back pain or wondering if a disc is the cause of your pain, then in this video, I'm going to share with you eight signs that prove your pain is not the result of a disc herniation. My name is Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist, and the signs and self-movement tests that I'm about to share with you come from my experience of evaluating over 10,000 back, butt, and cytokine pain cases. Let's dive right into it. If you're able to bend backwards in these three directions, which I'm about to show you, and it's pain-free and you have full range of motion, then you likely don't have a disc problem. Let's go through these one by one. First start, put your hands on your hips, feet shoulder width apart, and bend straight backwards. See if there's pain, see if there's restriction or stiffness there. Now go ahead and do a rotation extension test, we call this. So it's a two-part test. You're going to rotate your trunk all the way to the left, bend straight backwards, see what happens there. Now rotate fully to the right, bend straight backwards, and see if there's pain and or restriction there. If you have a disc problem, you'll almost always experience some type of pinch or pain or significant loss of motion. So if you don't have pain and your range of motion is pretty well maintained, then chances are you do not have a disc issue. Sign number two. Now let's just say that you did have pain and restriction when you bent backwards. Here are some tests I want you to do to prove that it is most likely not a disc. I want you to perform a repeated motions exam. So go ahead, you bend backwards one time, you feel the pain and restriction. Go ahead and perform that same motion up to 10 times. And if you do not notice an increase in your range of motion or reduction in pain, then chances are you do not have a disc herniation. But let's go one step further. Now what I want you to do to prove that it's not a disc problem is go the opposite direction. So go ahead and take a seat for me. Take a seat right there. So now go ahead and attempt to bend forward as if you're trying to palm the floor. It's okay if you can't palm the floor. You can put your hand on some yoga blocks or a stack of books or something like that or even hands on your knees. But you're just going to sustain a forward bent position for, again, up to 60 seconds if tolerated. Now let's just say the 60 seconds are up. You've sustained that forward bent position. Now what I want you to do is I want you to stand on up and I want you to repeat the back bend just one time. And if you notice now that the back bend is not worse, then you likely do not have a disc herniation. We often see that we're able to rapidly change someone's pain and range of motion when they have a disc problem because it's a soft tissue issue versus a bony problem. You don't see rapid changes in one's range of motion. So a lot of times discs are stressed by being in the forward bent position, which would then cause a block of motion in the backwards direction. But if you don't see an improvement with repeated back bends in range of motion and pain, or a worsening of your ability to bend backwards after you sustain the forward bent position, then chances are higher that you do not have a disc herniation causing your back pain. The third sign, you don't have pain with transitions. Transitional pain is often associated with disc problems. So if you have no pain when going from a sitting standing position, think sitting on the couch to standing up, uh, sitting in a chair at the, uh, at the dinner table, uh, driving and then getting out of the car, then you likely do not have a disc problem. So oftentimes what this transitional pain will look like is something like this where people Ooh, they feel sort of a catch and the back feels very weak upon transitioning from a seated position to a standing position. So if you don't have transitional pain, likely not a disc issue. If your pain feels better first thing in the morning, this is often the opposite type of pattern that we'll see people with disc problems present with. We know that disc pressure is highest in the morning, which means that when people go to get out of bed or around that 4, 5, 6 a.m. hour, the symptoms spike. If you're noticing that symptoms feel best first thing in the morning, again, this is inconsistent with a pain pattern of a disc herniation. That was sign number four. Sign number five, if you are greater than 50 years old, then the probability of a disc problem being the cause of your pain goes way down. It doesn't mean it's impossible, it just means that you're more likely to have joint or arthritic degenerative causes of back pain versus a disc herniation. Sign number six, coughing, sneezing, or straining, increasing pressure within the abdominal region does not increase your back pain. So we know that coughing, sneezing, and straining, we define this as like a Valsalva maneuver, whereby we have people hold their breath and sort of bear down. That increases pressure within the discs of the spine, not within the bones of the spine, but the soft tissue structures, the discs of the spine. And so if coughing, sneezing, straining does not increase your symptoms, this lowers the likelihood that it's a disc problem. Sign number seven, a gradual onset versus a sudden onset. If your symptoms came on gradually, this lowers the likelihood that it's due to a disc problem because most disc problems occur with injuries associated with lifting, bending, and twisting. Sign number eight, your symptoms are increased with stress or relieved by distraction. Let me explain. Let's define stress as an elevated state of the nervous system. This could be good or bad. New job, lost a job, birth, death, relationship, financial, something like that that puts you in an elevated state of fight or flight. If you notice that your back pain gets worse when you're in one of these elevated states, then that means that your pain is not due to damage of your disc. It's due to dis-ease within 
the uh, nervous system. Symptoms are caused more centrally by your mind. We call this central sensitization. Now, let's just say maybe there is no relationship between stress and your symptoms. Charlie, stress doesn't impact me at all. Okay, but do you notice that your symptoms are relieved when you're distracted? So pain is a great preoccupier. It's often fueled by attention and fear. When you divert your attention towards something that's more joyful and you're authentically engaged in that thing, such as when you go on vacation, when you're with your friends or your family members, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, uh, you're playing a video game, you're playing a musical instrument, doing something that you love, and your symptoms go away or you don't notice them. Isn't that weird? This means that your symptoms are not due to a disc herniation or due to damage of any tissue in your body for that matter, and instead they're due to central sensitization, a sensitized central nervous system. So there you have it, eight signs that your back pain is not caused by a disc herniation. If you want more tips and tricks to figure out the most likely source of your pain and how you can fix it naturally, just go ahead and check out my other videos. Thanks so much for watching.